Don't just play NES classics on your mister. Feel them. Get yourself a Damon Byte adapter. Cheap, easy, and responsive. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick, and today we're going to be building a Damon Byte adapter for your Mr. FPGA so you can use your favorite OEM NES controller for that old school nostalgic feel. Damon Byte adapters are great because you can build them for a reasonable price, and they work great with Mr. with super low latency around a millisecond. You do need some soldering skills to assemble these, but if you follow this guide, you'll be up and running in no time. I'll also be releasing guides for SNES, N64, Genesis, and Saturn adapters soon. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when those guides go live. I've also designed and 3D printed my own adapter case for this project. Like this video if you'd be interested in using this case for one of your adapters. All right, here's an overview of the parts and the tools that could be used for this build. Let's take a closer look at each one. This is a female NES controller socket. It's got seven pins on there, but we're only going to use five. You can find these on websites like AliExpress. Since we 3D printed our own custom case for this adapter, we're going to use some 12 millimeter M3 hex screws to assemble it all. I like to use some heat shrink tubing on all the solder connections that I make to the controller port. You're going to need to use an Arduino Pro Micro for this. There's a mini USB version, but I usually prefer to get the USB-C one. Here's a quick look at the 3D printed adapter enclosure that I designed. I tried to keep it as minimal as possible. I used an M1.4 5mm machine screw to fasten the Arduino into the 3D printed case. For those of you without access to a 3D printer, you can still build this adapter. I just recommend that you either use electrical tape or Kapton tape to wrap the Arduino board when you're done. That way you protect all the components on the board. The NES controller part has these two prongs on the top to help fasten it into something. The problem is those two prongs are too long for this case, so I'm going to dremel them off and make them a little bit shorter so they fit into my 3D printed case properly. You can see here that I'm just dremeling off the pointy bits on the end of the posts. Now that I'm done dremeling, I'm just going to do a quick test fit, make sure that the controller port fits properly into the case, and make sure there's no weird gaps around the controller port. I used some 22 gauge silicone wire for this project. I cut five lengths of about 40 millimeters. I used black, red, yellow, white, and green for the ground, VCC, clock, latch, and data lines respectively. You can use whatever color scheme works for you, but this is what was easiest for me. After I cut all five wires, I stripped about an eighth of an inch or two to three millimeters off each end of each wire. After I stripped all five wires, I lightly tinned both ends of all five wires. This actually makes soldering to the controller port pins and to the Arduino easier later on. Okay, great. Now that the wires are all tinned, we're going to prep the controller port by adding solder to each of the five pins that will wire to the Arduino. You can see a diagram on screen showing which pins carry which signal to the Arduino. Now that all the pins are prepped with solder, solder each of the five wires to the controller port according to the on-screen diagram. Remember, two of the pins aren't used, so pay close attention to which pins you solder the wires to. Awesome, all the wires are soldered securely, so we need to cut some shrink tubing to isolate and protect all those solder connections. After you've cut the five pieces of tubing, slide one piece over each wire and then use a heat gun to shrink the tubing so it's tight around all of the solder joints.
looks great. Now we've just got to solder the wires to the Arduino. So let's get started. Before you wire anything to the Arduino, make sure that you create a solder bridge on jumper J1. I started with filling the via for the ground connection. Then I heated the reverse side of the via with my soldering iron and pushed my ground wire in from the top side until the insulation touched the PCB. Next, I repeated the same process for the VCC connection. Here I connected the data line to the A1 via instead of the A0 via. Normally I'd recommend connecting the data wire to A0, but since this is a single player adapter it actually doesn't make a difference in this case and mine will still work just fine. Here we're going to wire up the latch signal to via number 2. And finally we're going to wire up the clock signal to via number 3. Technically, the assembly work on the adapter is done now. If you don't have a 3D printed enclosure, you could use electrical tape or Kapton tape to securely bundle up the wires around the board. For this video, we're going to install the board into my custom designed enclosure. Drop the Arduino into the bottom half of the case and make sure the USB-C port seats properly into the slot at the end of the enclosure. Also make sure that the board seats completely flat. Now use the M1.4 screw to fasten the board securely by inserting the screw into either via 9 or 10. Just tighten the screw until it's snug. Pop the controller port into place and then carefully line up the top half of the enclosure and drop it into place as well. Use the four 12mm M3 hex screws to close up the enclosure. Our custom adapter is finally completely finished. The only thing left now is to program the Arduino on the PC and then we're finally able to use it with the mister. Plug in the adapter to your PC and go to the MacGyver Daemon by GitHub page to download the zip file that we'll be using to program the Arduino. Link for the GitHub site will be in the description below. Locate the zip file on your PC and extract the contents somewhere easy to find. I used a folder on my desktop. Open the extracted folder and navigate to the NES controller's USB folder. Double click on the NES controller's USB INO file to open the Arduino IDE application. If you don't have this application already, I'll leave a link in the description to download it. Make sure that you install it before proceeding any further with this tutorial. Open the tools menu and navigate to the boards option, and then choose the Arduino AVR boards submenu. Then select Arduino Leonardo from the list. Next, open the tools menu again and go to the ports menu and make sure you select the port that is identified by Arduino Micro. Now we're ready to flash the Arduino. Click the upload button at the top left of the application window and let it do its thing. Once the upload is complete, we'll test the controller to make sure everything is working as expected. In Windows, open the run command and execute the command joy.cpl. If everything worked properly, you should see the Arduino Leonardo listed. Select the Arduino Leonardo controller associated with your Daemon Byte adapter and choose the properties option. You may have to try both depending on if you wired the data line to A0 or to A1. If we've done everything successfully, you should be able to move the D-pad and press all the buttons on the controller and see corresponding feedback in the Windows controller properties. As long as this works, you can plug the controller adapter into your mister and use your OEM controller with no worries whatsoever. All right, now that the adapter is built and functioning, let's go over the pros and the cons. First, the pros. Number one, components are reasonably priced. Number two, low latency. It's not as fast as snack, but it's really low. Number three, you can flash the Arduino for use with one or two controllers. 
Number four, you can connect to standard Mr. USB ports. You're not relegated to the user port like you are with Snack. Number five, this is a big one for some people. You can navigate the Mr. Menus. You cannot do this with Snack, but you can with Daemon Byte adapters. Number six, as an added bonus, you could use this adapter on a PC if you wanted to. And now for the cons. Number one, this is a DIY project and it does require assembly and some knowledge of soldering. Number two, you do have to source your own parts and availability could be tricky depending on which websites you check. Number three, it's not zero latency, this is not snack. If you need zero latency, it's not for you, but honestly, it's so low, it's not even an issue for casual players or even for many speedrunners. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and don't forget to share, it helps me out a ton, you guys. I also stream a lot of retro content on YouTube and Twitch, so stop by and say hi sometime. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.